Saul Bellow was a Canadian-born American writer. For his literary contributions, Bellow was awarded the Pulitzer Prize, the Nobel Prize for Literature, and the National Medal of Arts. He is the only writer to win the National Book Award for Fiction three times and he received the Foundation's Lifetime Medal for Distinguished Contribution to American Letters in 1990. In the words of the Swedish Nobel Committee, his writing exhibited the mixture of rich picaresque novel and subtle analysis of our culture, of entertaining adventure, drastic and tragic episodes in quick succession interspersed with philosophic conversation, all developed by a commentator with a witty tongue and penetrating insight into the outer and inner complications that drive us to act, or prevent us from acting, and that can be called the dilemma of our age. His best-known works include The Adventures of Augie March, Henderson the Rain King, Herzog, Mr. Samler's Planet, Seize the Day, Humboldt's Gift and Ravelstein. Widely regarded as one of the 20th century's greatest authors, Bellow has had a huge literary influence. Bellow said that of all his characters Eugene Henderson, of Henderson the Rain King, was the one most like himself. Bellow grew up as an insolent slum kid, a thick-necked rowdy, and an immigrant from Quebec. As Christopher Hitchens describes it, Bellow's fiction and principal characters reflect his own yearning for transcendence, a battle to overcome not just ghetto conditions but also ghetto psychoses. Bellow's protagonists, in one shape or another, all wrestle with what Cord called the big-scale insanities of the 20th century. This transcendence of the unutterably dismal is achieved, if it can be achieved at all through a ferocious assimilation of learning, and an emphasis on nobility. Early life, Saul Bellow was born Solomon Bellows in Lachine, Quebec, two years after his parents, Lesher and Abraham Bellows, emigrated from St. Petersburg, Russia. Bellow celebrated his birthday in June, although he may have been born in July. Of his family's emigration, Bellow wrote, a period of illness from a respiratory infection at age eight both taught him self-reliance and provided an opportunity to satisfy his hunger for reading, reportedly, he decided to be a writer when he first read Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin. When Bello was nine, his family moved to the Humboldt Park neighborhood of Chicago, the city that formed the backdrop of many of his novels. Bello's father, Abraham, was an onion importer. He also worked in a bakery as a coal delivery man, and as a bootlegger. Bellow's mother, Liza, died when he was seventeen. He was left with his father and brother Morris. His mother was deeply religious, and wanted her youngest son, Saul, to become a rabbi or a concert violinist. But he rebelled against what he later called the suffocating orthodoxy of his religious upbringing, and he began writing at a young age. Bellow's lifelong love for the Bible began at four when he learned Hebrew. Bellow also grew up reading William Shakespeare and the great Russian novelists of the 19th century. In Chicago, he took part in anthroposophical studies. Bellow attended Tully High School on Chicago's west side where he befriended fellow writer Isaac Rosenfeld. In his 1959 novel Henderson the Rain King, Bellow modeled the character King Dagfu on Rosenfeld. Education and early career, Bellow attended the University of Chicago but later transferred to Northwestern University. He originally wanted to study literature, but he felt the English department was anti-Jewish. Instead, he graduated with honors in anthropology and sociology. It has been suggested Bellow's study of anthropology had an influence on his literary style, and anthropological references pepper his works. Bellow later did graduate work at the University of Wisconsin a year on Madison. Paraphrasing Bellow's description of his close friend Alan Bloom, John Podgeretz has said that both Bellow and Bloom inhaled books and ideas the way the rest of us breathe air. In the 1930s, Bellow was part of the Chicago branch of the Works Progress Administration Writers Project, which included such future Chicago literary luminaries as Richard Wright and Nelson Algren. Many of the writers were radical, if they were not members of the Communist Party USA, they were sympathetic to the cause. Bellow was a Trotskyist, but because of the greater numbers of Stalinist-leaning writers he had to suffer their taunts. In 1941 Bellow became a naturalized U.S. citizen. In 1943, Maxim Lieber was his literary agent. During World War II, 
Bellow joined the Merchant Marine and during his service he completed his first novel, Dangling Man about a young Chicago man waiting to be drafted for the war. From 1946 through 1948 Bellow taught at the University of Minnesota, living on Commonwealth Avenue, in St. Paul, Minnesota. In 1948, Bellow was awarded a Guggenheim Fellowship that allowed him to move to Paris, where he began writing The Adventures of Augie March. Critics have remarked on the resemblance between Bellow's picaresque novel and the great 17th-century Spanish classic Don Quixote. The book starts with one of American literature's most famous opening paragraphs, and it follows its titular character through a series of careers and encounters, as he lives by his wits and his resolve. Written in a colloquial yet philosophical style, the adventures of Augie March established Bellow's reputation as a major author. In the spring term of 1961 he taught creative writing at the University of Puerto Rico at Rio Piedras. One of his students was William Kennedy, who was encouraged by Bellow to write fiction. Returned to Chicago, Bellow lived in New York City for a number of years, but he returned to Chicago in 1962 as a professor at the Committee on Social Thought at the University of Chicago. The committee's goal was to have professors work closely with talented graduate students on a multidisciplinary approach to learning. Bellow taught on the committee for more than 30 years, alongside his close friend, the philosopher Alan Bloom. There were also other reasons for Bellow's return to Chicago, where he moved into the Hyde Park neighborhood with his third wife, Susan Glassman. Bellow found Chicago vulgar but vital, and more representative of America than New York. He was able to stay in contact with old high school friends and a broad cross-section of society. In a 1982 profile, Bellow's neighborhood was described as a high-crime area in the city's center, and Bellow maintained he had to live in such a place as a writer and stick to his guns. Bellow hit the bestseller list in 1964 with his novel Herzog. Bellow was surprised at the commercial success of this cerebral novel about a middle-aged and troubled college professor who writes letters to friends scholars and the dead, but never sends them. Bellow returned to his exploration of mental instability, and its relationship to genius, in his 1975 novel Humboldt's Gift. Bellow used his late friend and rival, the brilliant but self-destructive poet Delmar Schwartz, as his model for the novel's title character, von Humboldt Fleischer. Bellow also used Rudolf Steiner's spiritual science, Anthroposophy, as a theme in the book having attended a study group in Chicago. He was elected a Fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1969. Nobel Prize Propelled by the success of Humboldt's Gift, Bellow won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1976. In the 70-minute address he gave to an audience in Stockholm, Sweden, Bellow called on writers to be beacons for civilization and awaken it from intellectual torpor. The following year, the National Endowment for the Humanities selected Bellow for the Jefferson Lecture, the U.S. federal government's highest honor for achievement in the humanities. Bellow's lecture was entitled The Writer and His Country Look Each Other Over. Bellow traveled widely throughout his life, mainly to Europe, which he sometimes visited twice a year. As a young man, Bellow went to Mexico City to meet Leon Trotsky, but the expatriate Russian revolutionary was assassinated the day before they were to meet. Bellow's social contacts were wide and varied. He tagged along with Robert F. Kennedy for a magazine profile he never wrote, he was close friends with the author Ralph Ellison. His many friends included the journalist Sidney J. Harris and the poet John Berryman. While sales of Bellow's first few novels were modest, that turned around with Herzog. Bellow continued teaching well into his old age, enjoying its human interaction and exchange of ideas. He taught at Yale University, University of Minnesota, New York University, Princeton University, University of Puerto Rico, University of Chicago, Bard College and Boston University, where he co-taught a class with James Wood. In order to take up his appointment at Boston, Bellow moved in 1993 from Chicago to Brookline, Massachusetts, where he died on April 5, 2005, at age 89. He is buried at the Jewish cemetery Shehi Haram of Brattleboro, Vermont. Bellow was married five times, with all but his last marriage ending in divorce. His son by his second marriage, Adam, 
published a non-fiction book in praise of nepotism in 2003. Bella's wives were Anita Goshkin, Alexandra Tsakakbasov, Susan Glassman, Alexandra Ionescu Tulsha and Janice Friedman. In 1999, when he was 84, Bello had a daughter, Rosie, his fourth child, with Friedman. While he read voluminously, Bello also played the violin and followed sports. Work was a constant for him, but he at times toiled at a plodding pace on his novels, frustrating the publishing company. His early works earned him the reputation as a major novelist of the 20th century, and by his death he was widely regarded as one of the greatest living novelists. He was the first writer to win three National Book Awards in all award categories. His friend and protégé Philip Roth has said of him, the backbone of 20th century American literature has been provided by two novelists a Euro William Faulkner and Saul Bellow. Together they are the Melville, Hawthorne, and Twain of the 20th century. James Wood, in a eulogy of Bellow in the New Republic, wrote, Themes and style, the author's works speak to the disorienting nature of modern civilization, and the countervailing ability of humans to overcome their frailty and achieve greatness. Bellow saw many flaws in modern civilization, and its ability to foster madness, materialism and misleading knowledge. Principal characters in Bellow's fiction have heroic potential, and many times they stand in contrast to the negative forces of society. Often these characters are Jewish and have a sense of alienation or otherness. Jewish life and identity is a major theme in Bellow's work, although he bristled at being called a Jewish writer. Bellow's work also shows a great appreciation of America, and a fascination with the uniqueness and vibrancy of the American experience. Bellow's work abounds in references and quotes from the likes of Marcel Proust and Henry James, but he offsets these high culture references with jokes. Bellow interspersed autobiographical elements into his fiction, and many of his principal characters were said to bear a resemblance to him. Criticism, controversy and conservative cultural activism, Martin Amos described Bellow as the greatest American author ever, in my view. For Linda Grant, what Bellow had to tell us in his fiction was that it was worth it, being alive. On the other hand, Bellow's detractors considered his work conventional and old-fashioned, as if the author was trying to revive the 19th-century European novel. In a private letter, Vladimir Nabokov once referred to Bellow as a miserable mediocrity. Journalist and author Ron Rosenbaum described Bellow's Ravelstein as the only book that rose above Bellow's failings as an author. Rosenbaum wrote, Sam Tannenhorst wrote in New York Times Book Review in 2007, but, Tannenhorst went on to answer his question, V.S. Pritchett praised Bellow, finding his shorter works to be his best. Pritchett called Bellow's novella Seize the Day a small grey masterpiece. As he grew older, Bellow moved decidedly away from leftist politics and became identified with cultural conservatism. His opponents included feminism, campus activism and postmodernism. Bellow also thrust himself into the often contentious realm of Jewish and African-American relations. Bellow has also been critical of multiculturalism and once said, who is the Tolstoy of the Zulus? The Proust of the Papuans? I'd be glad to read him. Despite his identification with Chicago, he kept aloof from some of its city's more conventional writers. In a 2006 interview with Stop Smiling magazine, Studs Terkel said of Bellow, I didn't know him too well. We disagreed on a number of things politically. In the protests and the beginning of Norman Mailer's Armies of the Night, when Mailer, Robert Lowell and Paul Goodman were marching to protest the Vietnam War, Bellow was invited to a sort of counter-gathering. He said, of course I'll attend. But he made a big thing of it. Instead of just saying OK, he was proud of it. So I wrote him a letter and he didn't like it. He wrote me a letter back. He called me a Stalinist. But otherwise, we were friendly. He was a brilliant writer, of course. I love Seize the Day. Awards and Honors, 1948 Guggenheim Fellowship, 1954 National Book Award for Fiction, 1965 National Book Award for Fiction, 1971 National Book Award for Fiction, 1976 Pulitzer Prize for Fiction, 1976 Nobel Prize in Literature, 1988 National Medal of Arts, 
1989 Peruvian Neurovosols per Malamed Award, 1989 Peggy V. Helmerich Distinguished Author Award, 1990 National Book Foundation's Lifetime Medal for Distinguished Contribution to American Letters, Bibliography. Novels and Novellas, Dangling Man, The Victim, The Adventures of Augie March, National Book Award for Fiction, Seize the Day, Henderson the Rain King, Herzog, National Book Award Mr. Samler's Planet, National Book Award, Humboldt's Gift, winner of the 1976 Pulitzer Prize for Fiction, The Dean's December, More Die of Heartbreak, A Theft, The Bella Rosa Connection, The Actual, Ravelstein, Short Story Collections, Mosby's Memoirs, Him With His Foot In His Mouth, Something To Remember Me By, Three Tales, Collected Stories, Plays, The Last Analysis, Library of American Editions, Novels 1944 A Euro 1953, Dangling Man, The Victim, The Adventures of Augie March, Novels 1956 A Euro 1964, Seize the Day, Henderson the Rain King, Herzog, Novels 1970 A Euro 1982, Mr. Samler A Euro Unregistered Trademark S Planet, Humboldt A Euro Unregistered Trademark S Gift, The Diana Euro Unregistered Trademark S December, Novels 1984 Euro 2000, What Kind of Day Did You Have? More Die of Heartbreak, A Theft, The Bella Rosa Connection, The Actual, Ravelstein, Translations, Jim Pell the Fool by Isaac Basher by Singer, Nonfiction, To Jerusalem and Back, Memoir, It All Adds Up, Essay Collection, Saul Bellow, Letters, Edited by Benjamin Taylor, Correspondence, Works About Saul Bellow, Saul Bellow's Heart, a Son's Memoir, Greg Bellow, 2013 ISBN 978-1608199952, Saul Bellow, Tony Tanner, Saul Bellow, Malcolm Bradbury, Saul Bellow Drumlin Woodchuck, Mark Harris, University of Georgia Press. Saul Bellow, Modern Critical Views, Harold Bloom, Handsome Is, Adventures with Saul Bellow, Harriet Wasserman, Saul Bellow and the Decline of Humanism, Michael K. Glende, Saul Bellow, A Biography of the Imagination, Ruth Miller, St. Martin's Prairie. Bellow, A Biography, James Atlas, Saul Bellow and American Transcendentalism, M. A. Quayam, Even Later, and The American Eagle and Martin Amis, The War Against Clitchy Copyright are Celebratory. The latter essay is also found in the Every Man's Library edition of Augie March. Saul Bellow's comic style James Wood in The Irresponsible Self, On Laughter and the Novel, 2004. ISBN 0-224-06450-9. The Hero in Contemporary American Fiction, The Works of Saul Bellow and Don DeLillo, Stephanie Hal Dawson, Saul Bellow A Song, written by S.U.F.J.A.N. Stevens on the Avalanche, see also, List of Jewish Nobel Laureates, Penn Saul Bellow Award for Achievement in American Fiction, Wilhelm Reich, References External links, Works by Saul Bellow at Open Library, Works about Saul Bellow in Libraries, Mr. Samler's City, City Journal, Spring 2008, Nobel Site with Two Speeches and Longer Biography, Annotated Bibliography of Criticism by the Saul Bellow Society, Bellow's 1955 Autobiographical Statement for Reference Book, Gordon Lloyd Harper. Saul Bellow, The Art of Fiction No. 37. Paris Reviewer, J. M. Cuezzi on the Early Novels, Slate's assortment of other writers takes on Bellow, mostly eulogistic, Joyce Carol Oates on Saul Bellow, Saul Bellow Book on literary website The Ledge, with suggestions for further reading. Blog post on Bellow's Russian family name a Euro Below or Bilov. Review of Bellow's Collected Letters, Saul Bellow, a Neocona Euro Unregistered Trademark S Tale by John Podgeretz, Reflections with Saul Bellow by Dejan Stojanovia Saul Bellow's Grave, Brattleboro, Vermont, Between Fiction and Autobiography, Review of Letters in the Oxonian Review, Leaving the Yellow House, a short story in Narrative Magazine. Bellow and Trotsky, Judy Newman, Burfroy, June 1, 2011.